So this video will talk about using an analysis of variance in action. And we'll go through a case study where we'll look at one example. So the example we're going to look at is a data set of different iron levels in Chesapeake Bay. Uh, Chesapeake Bay is located in the eastern United States, uh, not far from big cities like Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. Uh, and there have been a lot of environmental problems with uh, the water quality in Chesapeake Bay. And so we have this data set here where we collected different iron levels measured at different water depths within the bay. And researchers want to know if the changing water depths where they collect these different measurements, if that is influenced by the amount of iron content in the water. And so the experimenters have taken three different measurements at six different water depths. At zero feet, or right at the surface level of the lake, or of the bay. Uh, at 10 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet, and 100 feet. And they've gone through and sampled uh, different water depths, and they've collected iron content. And they just sample uh, kind of one, one sample, and the response variable then is the level of iron content measured in milligrams per liter. And so we've got a data set here that we'll, we'll look at. And so here's the data. So if we were to look at this in something like Excel, here's the raw data and a couple of summaries of it. And so you can see on the rows, we have the different water depths. We collected iron content at six different water depths from zero to 100 feet. And then we have different observations. And so, for example, at zero feet or at the surface of the water, we collected different iron content levels. And so it didn't vary very much. Uh, and so it's from 0 0.045, 0 0.043 to 0 0.04. And so we could then look at those. We could sum all those values if we wanted to know the total amount of water depth or of iron content at those three different water depths. And then we could take the mean value there. And so we can do that for all of the water depths. And we can see when we calculate the mean at each of them, we can see this increasing mean. That is, at higher water depths, there tends to be higher iron content levels. And so that might be, in, might be important as we begin to look more at the data. Well, here's a box plot representation of the data. As you can see here, just like we saw on the table, at those really, really uh, high water depths, we're seeing much greater iron contents. Uh, and so at the very low water depths, we can see between 0, 10, and 30 feet, iron content is quite low. At 40 and 50 feet, it looks like they're quite similar. More iron, 40 and 50 feet into the bay. And then at 100 feet, uh, there's quite a bit more iron in the samples that were taken there. So just a visual representation of what we're seeing in the iron content data. So a couple of notes about what we're seeing. Well, it looks like the changing water depths influences the mean iron content. But what else can we say? We really want to know, is there a statistical difference in the population means? That is, as you go from zero feet in the bay all the way up to 100 feet, can we say that those are statistically different? And so to do this, we need some more notation. We really need a new method in statistics for doing this. So the analysis of variance is going to allow us to examine the influence of multiple factors, such as the water depths, on a response variable of interest, the iron content. So before we talk more about analysis of variance, we do need to take into account and think about a few definitions. And so understanding these definitions are going to be essential to understanding the notation that we use in analysis of variance. And so first we can say that the individual experimental conditions that define a population are called the treatments or levels. In our case this is the different water depths from 0 to 100 feet. Then we can say the experimental units are the individual objects that are influenced by the treatment. And so in this case, we can think about them as being the water samples. And so remember, we have three different water samples collected at each water depth. And then the last thing, the responses, are measurements obtained from the experimental units. And so in this case, this is the iron content. 
And so you can think about this as being the response variable. So if we were doing something like a simple linear regression, this would be what we're predicting. And in this case with the ANOVA, it's also what we're predicting. Now, what does that look like? How can we visualize a one-way ANOVA model? Well, in this case, the one-way ANOVA model analyzes some data, X, that we're interested in, where there is chance variation uh, and that those variations are normally distributed. So we have these different levels of mu or our different treatments or factors, and we can see that they're different. And so are they statistically different? That's really what we want to find out. And so we could say each one X sub IJ has some uh, equals some population mean that we're interested in for the ith population, along with some random error, which we denote by epsilon. And then finally, uh, this goes for every value i from i or from 1 through i, and for every value j from j equals 1 all the way up to n. And so the reason we can't use a two sample t test for this analysis of variance is because we're working with more than two samples. And so we can't do a t-test uh, on more than two samples. And so that's where ANOVA comes in. So some more notation that we'll need to have in the back of our mind. So similar to the two sample t-test, we can pool the standard deviations across all of our different treatments or our levels. And so in this case, we want to uh, estimate first the sample mean which we can find by uh, looking at um, each different level. We could calculate the mean like we did for all of the water and the iron content levels at zero feet and then at 100 feet, and we can calculate the mean for those. However, to estimate the standard deviation or the sigma, we can pull the standard deviation. You might remember how we did this in uh, looking back to the two sample t-test approach. And in this case, we need to know how many samples are collected in each sample. So, for example, n sub 1 would be all samples collected in treatment 1. Uh, we can take that minus 1 and multiply by the standard deviation squared, or the variance. And then we can add to that the number of samples collected in the second treatment. Take away 1 and multiply by the variance for the second treatment. And we do that for all of the i treatments. And then we divide by the sample sizes minus 1, uh, and then we uh, do that for every different treatment. And so we can denote that pools, pooled standard deviation S sub P. And so then the ANOVA hypothesis test says that there are no differences among the means of the populations. So that's similar to what, what we said in the two-sample t-test. But here we're saying there is no difference between all of the means of the populations. We can go from one, two, three, four, five. In our case, we have six different iron levels. Uh, and so the null hypothesis would be that there's no differences across any of those. The alternative hypothesis is that there is some difference. That is, we can say that not all of the means are equal. And so how we might write that out is this. Our null hypothesis H sub zero is mu1 equals mu2 equals all the way up to mu i. All of the means are the same. The alternative hypothesis would say that not all of the means are equal. Now in this case, this is important to know because even if you have lots of different means, even if just two of them are different, but you have 20 or 30 means, uh, the alternative hypothesis would be supported if just two of them are different. And we'll talk about that uh, in, in our example. How we evaluate this, uh, going back to what we learned about the F-test, and so the ANOVA process uses the F-test, and it uses the F distribution to say uh, what the critical value is and to calculate from our data uh, what the F value is uh, given our data, and then it will calculate what the result of the hypothesis test will be. And so it's important to know the hypothesis test framework when we're talking about analysis of variance.